Up next, Adam Shartoff of Film Wax Radio welcomes his guest, two men instrumental to the making of an award-winning documentary called The Russian Woodpecker. Instrumental because one of them made the film and the other is its real-life protagonist. Have a look. Fyodor Alexandrovich is a radioactive man. He was four years old in 1986 when he was exposed to the toxic effects of the Chernobyl nuclear meltdown and forced to leave his home. Now 33, he's an artist in Ukraine with a singular obsession with Chernobyl and with the giant, mysterious steel pyramid now rotting away two miles from the disaster site, a hulking Cold War weapon nicknamed the Russian woodpecker for the constant clicking radio frequencies that it emits. In Chad Gracia's Sundance Award-winning documentary, Alexandrovich returns to the ghost town in the radioactive exclusion zone to try to find answers. The film is currently screening at the AMC Theater in Times Square in New York City and on demand. Joining me today are filmmaker Chad Gracia, welcome Chad, and uh, the artist uh, Fyodor Alexandrovich. Good afternoon, guys. Thanks for joining me. We're, we just saw a clip, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, which that is not the trailer, but it is a clip of, of it and a, and a really kind of like the climax, uh, in a way, you could say, to the film, right? So fill us in a little bit, Chad, uh, about the backstory. Well, the backstory is that I was in Kiev working on a play with Fyodor, and he was the set designer. Mm -hmm. And right away, he started to pull me aside and said, this, this play isn't so interesting. I found something more interesting. It's a Russian woodpecker. Come with me to check it out. And I thought he wanted to take me to a zoo or something to see a, a woodpecker. But eventually, I, <laughs> I did some Googling, yeah. and I discovered that the woodpecker was this secret Soviet signal. How secret if it's on, if you can Google it? Though? Well, well, the... You can Google it now, but oh, in 1976, okay. when they turned it on, no one in America knew what it was. It made this tapping sound, mm -hmm. um, and they thought that it might be a mind control weapon. Mm -hmm. They, meaning the CIA and the American public. So at that point, I thought, okay, you know what? I could do a five-minute film debunking these myths. Mm -hmm. And Fyodor convinced me to follow him into the radioactive zone to see this antenna. And uh, we very quickly learned that it was not going to be so simple. There was a lot of secrets, a lot of people still trying to hide what this antenna did, and ultimately it became quite dangerous. And Fyodor was threatened by the secret police to destroy the materials and 
to uh, to stop the film. Mm -hmm. So, what started as a five five minute piece ultimately right. became something much larger and more scary. Right. Uh, the, the talk about the. Um also, there's a component. To, there's a component of the film which explores these, you know, your recurring nightmares or dreams that you are having. So it also has this element, surreal, surreal sort of element as well to the film. What was that about? Well, I'm a, I'm kind of a skeptic and kind of a scientist, and Fyodor is a spiritual artist. Uh -huh. We're sort of opposites. When we began, I thought. And I said to Fyodor, let's interview the scientists and the engineers and the colonels and ask them, and they'll tell us. Sure. He, he said, my poor, naive American friend, this will never work. <laughs> First of all, they, will, they, will, um, they won't answer us, and they'll, they'll lie. <laughs> um, and he said, instead, we should reenact my dreams. And my first dream is that I'm sailing across a radioactive sea on a raft made out of mirrors with a torch, of completely course. naked. Uh -huh. And if we can reenact this, we will get closer to the truth. And that's just the beginning of his dream. It took us all over Ukraine. Um, so we had different approaches. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, we made a deal. I said, I'll film your dreams if you come and interview the scientists. Very good. And when, uh, when I take the interview uh, with the colonel, the St Stalinist colonel, Prokofiev, his hand shake as I ask about money for this Anton. And when I see the it shake is, hand. Yeah. Yeah, that I understand that is dark and mysterious secret in this this Your, this investigation we must we must found it's, it's crime. Uh go ahead. Well, our start. original goal was to debunk a conspiracy, but ultimately we ended up just stumbling upon a conspiracy a thousand times greater than anything we originally expected. Well, expound on that, please. <laughs> so, so at first you're just thinking uh, it's going to be this uh, a simpler story about, you know, Chernobyl, but the, what the bigger story is that uh, Chernobyl, of course, is is a cover is was a it was a, a uh, planned by the government cover up for this enormously expensive debacle, which was this antenna, right? Yes. But, well, again, I approached then, it very skeptically, and yeah. I thought that this was an open and shut case; that it was an accident. Mm -hmm. But we were able to speak with the head of the Soviet Union's investigation committee, the head of the Ukrainian investigation committee, and many other senior officials. And they all told me, Chad, there is a cover-up. The documents the night of the catastrophe were falsified. Mm -hmm. The transcripts that we've been given are not real. Mm -hmm. The trial that took place was a show trial. There is something, something is um, rotten. Something is, is smelly mm -hmm. and fishy. Mm -hmm. um, and Fyodor was able to put together all of these radioactive pieces of the puzzle into what he is convinced is a compelling explanation. Mm -hmm. He found one person who had a motive to potentially be the criminal behind the Chernobyl catastrophe. It's a question that the film asks. Half of the people on our team and half of the people we interviewed said, this is, not, this is nuts. This is a madman's right. dream. The other half said, this is quite possible if you consider the history of the Soviet Union, and it demands further investigation. So when we were looking at that clip at the uh, top of the segment there, mm -hmm. uh, that was, uh, first of all, uh, we were looking at like uh, what, what the, 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 it was a rally, right? Uh, but it was also kind of a revolution. Yeah, it was, that was the, that stage was the heart of right. the Ukrainian revolution, and they were being surrounded by pro-Russian pro troops yeah. that were closing in. And uh -huh. to go on that stage... Yeah, he risked life and, and his family's life, too, correct? You have a small child? Yes, yes, my, my, my uh, that is, uh, my son who go to school, and um, not so small. And, oh, he's got, uh, yeah. how old is he now? Uh, eight years. Okay, eight. Yeah. And uh, mm, that is about risk. Now the future of all people in folk. Uh, we have the risk for all, but have the the return the the cold war and the return the return nuclear nuclear dangerous. And now now we are in dangerous. Yes, yeah, oh, not safe. People also often ask Fyodor if he feels unsafe, and he looks to the uh, audience and says, so "All of us are unsafe." Yeah. If there's a madman with nuclear weapons, um, and if there's a possibility of returning, there's to more than one now. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, in Syria, you know, yeah. it, it would continue. It looks. I saw today the headline that it's Syria is really best looked at as a world war with 
many, many different players. And sure. so we're entering a very dangerous time. It feels like that. Um, uh, the film uh, oh, has had its premiere, right, world premiere at Sundance, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, you, and then, I mean, we met uh, shortly, at, the three of us met shortly after when we did an event together for Montclair, the Montclair Film Festival. And, but it's got, you've gone all around the world and um, and now uh, and so my but and one of the the festivals pardon me one of the festivals was right outside Chernobyl. Yeah, that's right. There's a fe there's so, a Chernobyl film festival. It's called Slavutic. Slavutic. And it's a it's a town that they built for all of the evacuated people who worked at and lived in the Chernobyl zone. Mm -hmm. And it's an amazing it's an amazing little uh, little town. And they have a film festival about urban renewal and. Uh, urban catastrophes mm -hmm. and we we shared it there with people who lived through it and w I was nervous that they would be hostile mm -hmm. who are you so an American That's coming to tell us our own history through and why didn't you find a journalist why do you have an artist yeah. searching but for me an artist can sometimes find even deeper truths it, maybe maybe the ideas are surrounded by some fog of surreality but there's a core of something in there oh sure a, a seed Right. And it's appropriate because in Ukraine, in the post-Soviet space, it's not possible to do a traditional journalistic investigation because the ghosts of the Soviet Union, the ghosts of authoritarianism, the ghosts of paranoia are so strong right. that I think truth, is, truth has been trampled <laughs> to yeah. such an extent that it's the, almost impossible to... The to, fog of truth, in yeah. a sense, right? What yeah, so it. it's appropriate to have an artist like Fyodor lead this, this quest. And we found this metaphor that is uh, the Duga is as iron curtain, and that is iron curtain between normal and unnormal uh, world. Uh -huh. And what we investigation, what is it, this iron curtain? Uh -huh. We do understand what is it, the unnormal world. Hmm. Um, it's, it's an incredible, incredible film, which I hope a lot of people will take the time and see. Um, it's right now, as of today, as of this past weekend, it opened at uh, the AMC, as I said, the AMC Times Square, uh, and is playing throughout this week. So if you're in New York and you uh, have a, a free uh, window of time, please go to, that th to the AMC Theater and, and do check out The Russian Woodpecker, directed by Chad Gracia and with uh, Fyodor Alexandrovich. Uh, it's also opening uh, in, in L.A. theatrically. Mm -hmm. Just want to mention that at the Lemley Theater next, uh, next uh, this coming Friday. And, and also, most, most, uh, I guess, most ubiquitously, you can, if, you're, if you're anywhere else, you can see it on demand on iTunes, where it's doing quite well, and, uh, and, and uh, Amazon, and also Vimeo on demand. Exactly. Okay, very good. Uh, well, thank you guys very, very much for this. Uh, what's, go what's next? What's next? Well, Fyodor has returned to his life as an artist, and he's painting and, and, uh, and selling his paintings. And for me, I'm working on a new documentary. Oh, yeah? So you're, you're now a filmmaker. For yeah, I've, been, I've got, got the, the bug. bug. Yeah. <laughs> this one's going to be even crazier than the Russian woodpecker. Well, it's not a competition. We, everybody can be, you know, they can all be crazy, and, uh, you know, uh, the crazier the better. Yeah, I Makes guess. Makes for good, compelling uh, film going and, and, and TV watching, right? And, and how are you doing? I know you're a little under the weather today. A little, so thank you for coming. Bump, bump.